Thank you all for being here. Um, we are really excited to be speaking with prospective transfer students. Last week, we had a webinar for um, the admissions process and we heard from our director of programming and our director of advising. But today we have the privilege of hearing from current Berkeley engineering transfer students, which is really exciting. We had something like 200 questions last week, so uh, I'm sure we will have many in the Q&A this, uh, this time around, and I will be sure to moderate that. Uh, before we get started, my name is Nicole McIntyre. I am the Manager of Transfer Success Initiatives for the UC Berkeley College of Engineering. And what that means is my whole job is to work with prospective transfer students to make sure they have all the information that they need and to offer summer research internships, and then to be involved in the admissions process, and then to work with uh, matriculated transfer students through things like classes, mentoring programs, our ambassadors program, and other cool options. So our unit has a whole position and a student team that I'm sure you'll hear about committed to the success of being a transfer student. With that, I am going to ask our panelists if they would mind introducing themselves. Maybe your name, your pronouns, your major, your year, your community college. And I'll put the information in the chat too, because I know that tends to go quickly. Um, I'm going to start by passing it off to Paolo. Good afternoon, everyone. I guess evening, or I don't know where everyone is. Um, but my name is Paulo. I'm a fourth year. Uh, I use the he, him, his pronouns, and I'm studying civil and environmental engineering. And I went to Moore Park College, Ventura College, and Oxnard College. So if you have any Ventura County people, what's up? I made it. You can make it too. Um, I forgot what any, anything else I have to say. Um, and I'm also the engineering transfer success ambassador that Nicole briefly mentioned, and I'm sure we will talk more about later. Totally ignore what I just put in the chat. That was a copy paste error. Um, with that, maybe we'll go over to Sydney. Okay. Hi, I'm Sydney. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a junior and then I'm a bioengineering major and I transferred from Santiago Canyon College in Orange County. Awesome, thank you. Megan? Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Megan Lee. I, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I am a mechanical engineering major. This is my fourth year, and I'm coming from Santa Barbara City College, so shout out to Ventura. Um, and yeah, happy to be here. And finally, Avanov. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Abano Bustoros. Uh, I use he, him, his pronouns. Um, I'm fourth year studying electrical engineering and computer science, and I transferred from Orange Coast College, so go Pirates in Orange County. And, uh, and I'm one of the engineering transfer success ambassadors that we will, sure we, will, we will be talking about in a minute. Thank you very much. I bet those of you seniors can feel that go the attendance all slide. Nice. It's gonna be it over to an A. Interest from you why you decided to apply to and transfer to UC Berkeley compared to all the other schools. I'm sorry, you're cutting out a little bit for me. Do you mind repeating it? I thought so too. Why did you choose Berkeley? Can any of us just jump in? Okay, so some of my thoughts on it. So it's um, the professors. So I wanted to go to school with professors that would really challenge me and you will get some of the best in the world here. Um, and, and in addition to that, the campus environment and the culture here is just really um, forward thinking, really innovative, really accepting. Um, so yeah, these are the reasons why I chose Berkeley. I think Berkeley is yeah Berkeley is a really special school um it's 
there's multicultural environment. You can work with the students uh, from all backgrounds, from different countries, uh, all across the whole world. Um, the faculty here are amazing and they are one of the best in the world. So you get to be among one among the best in the world in the field of engineering. Um, there is always constantly innovating stuff happening on campus um, from class projects and really small classes to big research. So you can experience all of that firsthand and see all the coming technologies and innovative projects before they even come to the world. Yeah, and adding on to what everyone said, um, in terms of location, uh, I mean, I can go surfing in the morning, I can go snowboarding up in Tahoe, and then I can visit a national park on the same day. Um, there's not really a lot of places that you can do that in the whole world. And just the fact that you have that flexibility to do that. I mean, I'm a big outdoors guy. Um, so I love spending time outdoor and, and literally just while you're on campus, you can walk five minutes and be engulfed by like massive trees and just kind of just sit there and like rest and just take it easy. Um, so that's like why I chose Berkeley. I mean, besides the whole, you know, great professors, great environment and just the classes, um, that was also a big reason for me. I think just adding on to like everybody else's just one of the main things for me was like Berkeley had the best education for the best cost for me because like I was when comparing schools I was comparing I think Boston University and Berkeley and Boston was like 70,000 a year versus Berkeley is like maybe 30,000 so like that was a big factor in like decisions. Awesome, thank you very much. I'm gonna um, clarify a process question, which is we will only be looking at the Q&A for questions. So uh, our panelists are speaking and I don't want folks looking at the chat and the Q&A, so please just use the Q&A um, and we will answer questions there. My next question for you all is, what advice do you have for prospective transfer students? thinking back to your time at community college. Can go first on that. Um, so for prospective students that they are applying right now, uh, I wanna tell you that you don't need to reflect so much about what you have been to your grades before this semester. Uh, and this time you have to think about your essays because Berkeley, as I said, is really different school. It's not only the best in its field technically, in the technical terms, but they look into the essays and they look into the story behind you. And your story is who you are and that's how they choose you to be here. Um, so spend some time on the essay, on the essays questions on the application to make sure that these essays reflects who you are. So we have a question in the Q&A about your approach to writing your essay. So I'm wondering if you want to elaborate on that at all, Abhinav. Yeah, um, for me, I like to always think about essays, uh, especially in those essays. Um, you have really 350 words, I, um, as I remember from my application. Um, and you need to show, um, your personality, um, how you changed, how you grow. Um, so I usually you take the three three steps process. Um, for every question in the essays, I uh, I always like think about who the person before, what happened, of or the experience I'm telling in this essay. What was happening during this experience, and who I am after this experience. So like before the problem, what happened to solve the problem or the experience. You went to a conference that changed your life. Um, you had a job that your boss told you some stuff and you decided to go back to school and um, get education. Um, um, whatever the experience is, what happened inside it that may change your life and um, 
who you are after this experience and how this experience relate to your field. If you can relate all three things in this short amount of words, um, this is gonna be a really good story about you. Thank you. Any other advice for community college students? It's really hard to follow up on Abhinav because that was spectacular. Um, but truly what he said, like really take the reader on a journey, like let them know like the reason why you want to be here and what you've overcome to do that. And then a, I guess an additional advice to that is take some time to sleep on it and really think about the things you're saying, have family members, have friends, have professionals look at the essays and get their advice and just really dedicate some good time to it. Um, and then another piece of advice that I would have is to absolutely keep all of your notes um, in particular from differential equations, linear algebra, your books, your notes, keep those, trust me, you're gonna need them. Um, yeah, and then if there's any other uh, advice, Paulo or uh, Sydney. Uh, just with the keeping notes, I'm just because I'm a bioengineering major, I would recommend keeping the chem, the physics, and the bio notes as well, just because you use those a lot. <laughs> All right, Megan, I'm wondering if you could tell us from your perspective, the best part of studying at Berkeley Engineering. I would have to say the professors. Um, it's, I have never in the, like in a beautiful way, I've never been as challenged as I've had uh, prior to Berkeley. Um, previously, it was kind of like just remembering formulas and plugging in some numbers. And these professors, they really truly encourage you to really understand what you're doing to the theory behind things, really read the math. Um, so I would have to say the professors are my favorite part. And also equally like my peers as well. Like I've met some incredible people so far and, and it's just encouraging like going through this. Berkeley's hard, like these classes are tough. Um, and it's, you need a, a, a friend circle that will help push you through that. So yeah, so peers as well as professors, I would say. Awesome, thank you. Paolo, what is the worst or the hardest part of being a Berkeley engineer? Uh, you gave me the hard one. Okay. Um, <laughs> I did ask you this a few months ago. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Uh, and I'll try to give the same answer if I can remember it. But, um, but definitely, I think the hardest part and really a lot of people can relate to is just kind of at some point feeling into that imposter syndrome, especially um, it was really hard during Zoom just because, you know, you don't have that in-class experience. So you don't really know how people are doing in the class. You can't really say, oh, wow, that was a rough test. So just kind of how you reflect on your first exam. You could have been really bad, but you don't know how the rest of the class did either. Um, so just really not falling into that imposter syndrome and realizing that like, Berkeley like, chooses you to be here because they can know that you can do well here. Um, so it's always just being in the right mindset, just knowing that you belong here. Um, it's not as competitive or like cutthroat as people say it is. You know, everyone's really here to help you and for you to succeed. And the amount of resources that Berkeley has available for you is incredible. I mean, you can, if you need, you, you don't have clothes for an interview, they'll give you clothes. You don't have a laptop, they'll give you a laptop. Literally anything that you need to succeed, Berkeley will offer, especially college engineering. Um, we also have great faculty for professional development, getting you research as well as just making sure that you are okay here. Um, so it's always good to just always speak what's on your mind and don't feel like you have to hold everything together because it is hard, like Megan says. And one of the best things about Berkeley is the people who you're taking these classes with. I mean, some of these people might even change the world and just being able to sit next to them, learn from them, be engaged by them. And just like, for example, I've been working closely with Abhinav these last two months and I've learned a lot from him and the way he does certain things. And so he's someone that I look up to and I've only known him for two months and he's a great guy. You guys will hopefully all get to meet him too, but simply just don't fall into the imposter syndrome. Know what you're worth and know that you will be okay at the end of the day.
That was a very positive answer. Could you clarify for anyone who doesn't know what you mean by imposter syndrome? Sure, imposter syndrome, uh, frankly, but, um, and I'll talk about personal experience. Uh, last summer, I interned for a construction company down in LA. And like my first day on the job, I said, oh, I go to Berkeley. And they automatically thought, because I go to Berkeley, I know everything. And I didn't. I just my first industry um, internship. And just from up the beginning, like they expected me to know so much. And I didn't know that much. And so me just kind of getting in there thinking like, oh, like, I go to Berkeley, like, oh, do I really belong here if I don't know what's going on? Um, another example is just like being in a class and just saying like, like I said, you're surrounded by such smart people and just thinking like, oh, wow, like I'm not as smart as that guy uh, or girl. Um, and it's like, I shouldn't belong here. So just feeling that you don't belong in something that you do belong in, I think is the right answer. I'm involved in the admissions process and we do not make mistakes. If uh, imposter syndrome is very real, I felt it as a Berkeley student. And if we admit you, we know that you can be successful as a Berkeley engineer. And we have a very high graduation rate and a very high retention rate as a result. Awesome, thank you. We have a lot of questions about the competition in classes. Berkeley has a reputation for being very competitive and people want to know if that's true. Does anybody want to weigh in? Sure. Uh, Ber Berkeley is, is competitive, and that's no doubt. Uh, you are in number two engineering school in the whole world. <laughs> it's, it's really competitive, but it's doable. The thing is, there's a difference between competitiveness and I can do that. Um, Competitive because all the people that you are around, they push you to go further and further. Um, they push you to do better. Um, but in sense, there are there are so many competitive classes, yes, but there are so many resources at the other side. Um, you will get a lot of help. Uh, the amount of courses staff and the, the work they do for you um, and to help you is unbelievable. You, I have never seen something like that in my life um, because the amount of effort they put to make the content and the materials available for you to learn. Um, and I want to say that one more time. Going off what Paula said, definitely the hardest part when you come to Berkeley is to forget that you are, um, you, you're gonna a get A's all the time. It's, uh, it's not like that. It's just change of shift of perspective um, to new goals, to new definition of success, uh, if, you, if you can say that. So competitive, yes, doable, also yes. There's a lot of resources and success rate is really high. So um, I, was, I was in a, in a conference for grad schools um, and the professor said a 3.0 in Berkeley, it's more than 4.0 in somewhere else. And all, the whole world knows that. It's, it's well known, it's not, a, it's not a secret. I'll do just a, a slight follow up on that. It's really tough with Abhinav because he's so good with words. Um, <laughs> I would maybe reframe the thought to say like, you're only in competition with yourself. Like that's who I've ever felt in competition with is myself. So when I do poorly on an exam, I say, okay, I don't ever want to make this mistake again. How can I overcome it? And as Paulo and Abhinav mentioned, the resources are incredible here. Like they will go out of the, the professors, the GSIs, the tutoring services, they go out of their way to help you. Um, so yeah, just keep that competition within yourself strong and you will do very well. Yeah. Thank you. To that note, we've got a question about what resources are available to help students succeed. 
And I'm sure each of us could speak about a different subset um, based on what has been utilized. But um, we've heard so far course staff, I heard from Abinov and Paolo, um, meaning the professors, the teaching assistants. Um, Paolo talked about my team, the Center for Access to Engineering Excellence and our success closet for clothes and our technology closet. Um, I'm wondering if there's anything else you all have utilized that you'd add. Uh, the one that I would add is the academic counseling, just for like scheduling classes, because getting here, I had no idea what the heck to take. And so like I had to talk to him and I was like, I don't know what to take next semester. And he just kind of sat there and like talked me through it. And he's like, you're okay. Like, we'll just schedule it and you're fine. Like, you don't need to schedule it this far in advance. But that's like the one that I would add on. And uh, Sydney said, um, definitely, I don't know Marvin and Tiffany's official roles, but um, Tif Tiffany's a great play person to go if you need any like help on research or, you know, research advice or even like resume. Um, and then Marvin is just a great professional development. Let me use the word God, but professional development God. Um, so any professional development questions you have, he is amazing from what should my LinkedIn look like, my resume, you know, and negotiation, as well as like weighing in two different offers and which offer like fits you best. Um, those have been really helpful for me. Awesome, thank you. If I can add um, some more. So Marvin and Tiffany work for Engineering Student Services, uh, which is my team. We also have a tutoring center that offers free drop-in tutoring every day from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for a lot of the required engineering courses, in addition to the campus-wide tutoring center. Um, our campus has a career center. We have uh, counseling and psychological services, disabled students program, veteran students program, you know, all of the really uh, great cornerstones one are some, some transfer, engineering transfer specific resources. We have a transfer mentor program where more advanced engineering transfer students mentor um, younger transfer students. So uh, Abinov is a mentor in that program for two uh, new EEC students. We also have two classes for new engineering transfer students, one for students in their first semester to help them transition to UC Berkeley, learn study skills, learn about resources, build community, and one for second year students who are preparing for the next step in their career. So thinking about graduate school, uh, career positions, exploring their interests. Abinab's also in that class. <laughs> and then one of the last things I'll mention is our Transfer Success Ambassadors Program. So we have hired transfer students to answer these kinds of questions all day long, to talk about how to find research, talk about how to find internships, to review resumes, if nothing else, just to be a friendly face that you can say hi to. I saw in the, the chat that folks are worried about making friends. So we have um, a transfer center that's open three days a week that's staffed by those ambassadors, uh, which again includes Avenum and Paolo. Um, and one thing they did this week is they made care packages for fellow transfer students. So we spent our day giving out midterm care packages. So that is just a sample of resources. Um, but again, there are many of us here available to help. And uh, it's really just a, a matter of learning all the resources and finding the time to access them all. Awesome. All right. Um, I am interested to hear from anyone about their first semester. What was that transition like? Paolo, Megan, and Abinob, you did that on Zoom last year. Sydney, you're doing that right now. Um, and how did that jump feel from your community college courses to UC Berkeley classes? I'll uh, go ahead and start it off. Um, so the yes, as um, Nicole mentioned, it was on Zoom. So uh, that wasn't the most pleasurable thing for me. I definitely like being more in person. So I'm thankful for that now. Um, so they, I'm thinking the first classes that I took 
were like statics and and yeah, it made me really like have to adjust. I had to get better at time management. I realized that the amount of homework, the amount of reading, um, the time that needed to be invested required was much more. Um, so therefore I had to get better at time management. It wasn't undoable by any means, um, but I just had to, yeah, get better, yeah. I can talk a little about my first semester here. Um, my first semester going into Berkeley, I wanted to take it easy because, you know, well, Berkeley, you know, Zoom, you know, so I didn't take as many technical courses, but um, so I actually didn't, I found my transition a lot easier than some people. Some people just went full three techs and just, you know, try to juggle everything. Me, I'll know how I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna take two techs and then like my HSS class or my you're required. I don't even know what the requirement is. Um, Nicole, what is it? Which HSS stand for? Humanities and Social Sciences. Typically, you take you go. four of them in your community college and two at Berkeley once you've transferred. Yeah, so I took that. So I actually found myself with a lot of free time, but I use that free time to network and really start focusing on just getting and securing an internship my first semester um so which i was able to do thankfully um so i spent that free time just really working on my linkedin resume talking to as many people as you can alumni and just focusing on securing an internship for the summer so as nicole mentioned i'm in my first semester at berkeley now and i'm happy it's in person because online school was not my favorite thing. But I would say that it has been a little bit of a transition because Berkeley does require a lot more time than community college did. And I definitely have made like a group of like friends where we are in like multiple of the same classes. And it worked out that like there's quite a few of the like bioengineering transfer students where we have like three or four classes together. So we just kind of grouped up and we have our studying together. So that really, really helps with the transition. Um, for me, my first semester in Berkeley uh, was over Zoom. I decided to come to Berkeley and live near the university just to get the vibe. So being uh, around Berkeley campus, even though I didn't get into any of the buildings, um, it was tough, um, changing the way the exams and the way the classes are structured. Um, I had to adapt to that. Um, and uh, the biggest challenge was to adapt my goals and my success definition to what is really is Berkeley, what, what Berkeley really is. Um, and the first thing I, I remember I struggled with is I'm not gonna do everything in Berkeley. I'm not gonna get to do all everything in Berkeley, but I have to choose and I have to, to make trade-offs. So if I'm gonna decide to focus on academics or do research, so I'm not gonna be able to um, go and turn at the same time or do a lot of interviews at the same time. Um, if I'm gonna do interviews, so I have to decrease a little bit of my research time. So it's all goes back to the time management. And I think after the first semester, I got really better with time management and making decisions. Um, but uh, I would say the transition um, was a really steep learning curve. And, uh, and I really, I really changed it that first semester and uh, I love it. Awesome, thank you. Does anyone live in the dorms? No, so we have a question about how is dorm life? Uh, dorms are available to transfer students, but I would say they are for the most part, not uh, a super common option. Megan, you have a bit of a career behind your belt. I'm wondering if you're willing to talk about how you found housing and where you live. 
So housing, it is a, to be honest, it, it's a little pricey. Um, all of California in particular, the Bay is very um, pricey to live in. So, and I have two dogs. Uh, so I wanted the ability to have like a bit of a yard and such. Um, so I live not extremely close to campus, but not very far, about an eight minute drive. I'm um, in a, a beautiful, like uh, right beside a forest. It's very incredible. Um, and yeah, so I, I honestly use Craigslist. A lot of people are kind of timid of Craigslist and you should be, um, <laughs> just proceed with caution. Um, but yeah, I looked at Marketplace, Craigslist, spoke to friends. Um, I'm also prior military a veteran and used the veteran center and, and saw if they had housing there and then luckily I found a essentially a studio um, for a very good price um, so yeah if you just my advice would be to start looking early if you're planning to move here start looking early um, and then I'm more than happy to if anybody like if I can give my email at the end of this I'm more than happy to help anybody I can show you places uh, please email me anytime with questions um, yeah, and there's always options um, to roommates. Um, there's tons and tons of roommate options. I think I'm probably the only person I know that lives by myself. Um, so yeah, definitely look for roommates if you're not opposed to that. It's, it'll be significantly cheaper. Awesome, thank you. You're gonna get 97 emails from people asking you to connect them to apartments. So we have a lot of questions about extracurriculars. So I will maybe ask two of you to speak about the extracurriculars you participated in in community college, you know, that were on your transfer application. And maybe two of you could talk about your extracurricular experiences now at Berkeley. And so Sydney, since you have been at Berkeley less than two months, maybe you could start by talking about things you got involved with in community college. Uh, yeah, so in community college, I did um, volunteering. So I did, um, like I volunteered at St. Joseph's Hospital in Orange County. And then I was vice president for um, the pre-med club at my community college. I'm not pre-med anymore, but, <laughs> um, and then I was secretary for the STEM club at my community college. Awesome, thank you. Anybody else want to talk about community college? I can uh, put a note in about uh, yoga. Uh, so at community college, I um, just like a volunteer um, did yoga and meditation classes. And I was very lucky to help Nicole uh, one time for the College of Engineering for a yoga class. And it's something that I think like you have to prioritize your mental health and you have to find that balance with the classes here. Um, so yeah, I was very thankful for the opportunity and I'm constantly promoting it, um, especially in engineering. It's, it can be very time consuming. So yeah, just taking that time to prioritize, whether it's 10 minutes, 30 minutes, just taking the time to prioritize um, mental health yeah. and stretch your body, move your body. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Abana, maybe you could talk about what you've been involved in in your almost year and a half at Berkeley. And I'm gonna add the caveat that people wanna know how hard is it to get extracurriculars as a transfer student? Uh, there's, as I said, there's tons of extracurricular activities you can do in Berkeley. Um, tons of clubs, um, professional clubs that they are related to your major or um, something professional like business, uh, engineering clubs, coding clubs, um, and social clubs. You can find anything you can think about. They have a club for it. And there are some people interested in it. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, for me, in this year and a half, I was involved with mostly the ESS, the uh, engineering students services and uh, and uh, I was I did like P prep which was um, a program before uh, before the school starts it was a really good program I think Nicole can talk about that more than me um, and uh, I, I I was part of a robotics club um, in Berkeley um, and they they are working on building some robots um, to compete in some competitions. Uh, and I've been so like, 
I've been part of some social clubs um, related to uh, Arab students and uh, um, and Egyptian students because I'm I'm Egyptian. Um, I was born and raised there, so it's always a good time to have sometimes to connect with people. Um, another extracurricular activity I did that was really helpful uh, during my spring semester, I joined a decal. Um, and that decal was for interviews and preparing your resume and how to get connections. Um, it was really good um, and I really enjoyed it. I'm also part of um, the entrepreneurship certificate program. So on the side of my studies and getting my degree in electrical engineering and computer science, I'm taking like entrepreneurship classes um, that helps you um, to start your startup um, business-wise and technical-wise. And what did you do this last summer? Yeah, last summer I did an internship in Apple and uh, Cupertino. That was really fun. Um, he signed an NDA, yeah. so he can't tell you anything else about it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's not a secret. Uh, like most of the work I can talk about, that's that's obvious. But um, the culture of Apple is uh, is is a great company. I love it. I love my team, um, and I will tell you that I didn't even imagine that when I was in your place applying to Berkeley, um, and that's one thing, Berkeley. Berkeley.edu that you will get at the end of your email address, this works a lot. Uh, people will look at you differently just because you go to Berkeley. Uh, they will respond to your emails. They will look at your resume. And Berkeley name in this field, in the field of engineering is well known. And this competitiveness that I was talking about and the hard classes that I was talking about, this is the worst so it's really works a lot because you get people appreciate that thank you paolo how about your extracurriculars and instead of asking how hard they were to get them i'll ask you how do you maintain work-life balance doing everything that you're about to tell us about yeah sure thing um so I am part of a few things. Um, my year and a half, um, I am a part of the Chi Epsilon Honor Society for Civil and Environmental Engineering. It's in the Honor Society nationwide. I think Berkeley's chapter was the seventh founding chapter. Uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, I'm part of that. That was a long pledge process, not like fraternity pledging, of course, but more like networking, hosting review sessions, um, doing social ones. I, we taught a class to high school students about civil engineering students, a uh, civil engineering major um, and what you can do in that major. Um, outside of Chi Epsilon, I am the professional development director for the Cal Construction Club. So the Cal Construction Club is a part of the American Society of Civil Engineers um, Club here, but they have ASCE has a bunch of competition teams. Um, so I'm a part of the construction competition team and our competition is every February and where we basically get a project and you have to bid and estimate and schedule a whole project. And then you provide your information, what you found, why you chose that bidding, why you chose that scheduling, why did you choose that modeling? And we use a bunch of industry softwares and we give a huge presentation to a, a panel of judges slash industries. Um, and then after that competition is just a huge career fair. I think it's the biggest um, west of the Mississippi or something like that. Um, and that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of time. And it's a lot of time, especially since competition team. So we do dry runs on the weekends. Um, we do meetings every week. And especially since I'm an executive board, I have to do weekly meetings with the executive team. Um, so for example, today I got here on campus at 9 a.m. I'm not leaving here until 10 p.m. Um, so while, how to do all of this, it's really, um, you really have to know yourself. Um, as simple, simply put, it requires personal sacrifice. Um, I don't really get to see much of my friends during the week, except like the friends that are in my major slash 
competition teams. You know, I consider them my friends, so I guess to them. But like, you know, I'm not going out. Um, but I still get my workouts in. Um, it's really about dedication as well as like self discipline and really deciding what really matters to you the most. Um, and I go to bed really early and I still get my eight, nine hours of sleep, but it's really staying on top of what you have to do, what you want to do, as well as like, what can you do? I mean, obviously some days that like, you're not gonna be able to go to as bed as early as you want. Um, so just being kind of true to yourself as well as just having enough time for yourself as well has really helped me. Um, doing all of this extracurricular activities I've been doing. Thank you. How are you all doing? I feel like I'm talking nonstop. Um, does anyone else, we have a lot of questions about the balance between work and social life and also considering mental health. So I'm wondering if anyone else wants to add their perspective to that question. I can uh, say a bit about like what Paulo touched on earlier. Um, it is a beautiful area here. You can literally go surfing or snowboarding or go on hikes. Like there's so many opportunities to get outdoors. And I think that that maybe I'm biased, but I think it really helps with like clearing the mind and such. Um, so yeah, take advantage of the outdoor activities that are offered in the Bay Area. San Francisco is 30 minutes away. You can go explore the city. If you are a foodie, I would, there's so many food options. Uh, yeah, there's so many incredible food options here. Um, but then also uh, piggybacking on what Paolo said again, you have to, yeah, you just got to know your body, like know yourself, know your mind and prioritize when when's needed. Um, so maybe you don't get to play all week, but then on Saturday, you can take a half day off or a day off and yeah, just finding that balance in there. Awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry to jump around, but we've got some questions about community college. So I'm gonna ask you to think back to those days. Um, did you all take all of the recommended courses for your major? Definitely yes. Paolo says yes, Abhinav says yes, Sydney's nodding. I had to retake one here. Um, it was if anybody's going for mechanical, um, essentially like electromagnetism, uh, dynamics, they make you retake the Berkeley edition here. Uh, for EECS, you get to like do the lower division classes again, most of them. Um, but all the recommended courses on assist.org, uh, take them as much as you can. Um, that acquired the courses, they are no joke. You have to take them. Um, the recommended courses, take as much as you can. Um, that's, that's what I did. Awesome, thank you. Um, did anyone change their major while they were in community college? Didn't I you did. Yeah. yeah, I went from biochem to bioengineering, so it wasn't that big of a change, though. <laughs> Someone in the Q&A is asking about exploring majors, um, which is hard to do in community college, right? We don't have research, really, or upper division courses. I will, if anyone didn't attend last week's webinar, let you know that you can't change majors once you're at Berkeley Engineering. So it is important to do what you can to try to explore majors before you transfer because um, you're committed for at least two more years. You can absolutely change your field of study for graduate school though. Um, just looking for any other community college questions I want to ask you. Someone is curious to know um, why you decided to get a degree and keep going. Um, and if any of you maybe joined the workforce and then decided this isn't from, like I want a, to add a, a bachelor's degree. I can uh, talk about that one. I'm pretty passionate about it. Um, so 
I am an older student, a mature student. Um, <laughs> and so prior, I was an aircraft mechanic and I love aircraft. I've been absolutely fascinated with them since I was like five years old. And then it came to me one day, I was like, you know, what if I could actually like build these? What if I can design them instead of working on them mechanically? And so hence now I'm in school for, um, yeah, the, the end goal is to go for masters for aerospace. I can talk a little bit. Um, for me, it was just a personal challenge, um, as well as, you know, I was always told, man, just civil engineering and construction, I have like a very strong passion about, about it. But what's really important to me was just like, I really wanted to challenge myself. So I really looked at what schools were available. And, you know, UC Berkeley at the time, I think right now it's number two, but at the time it was ranked number, the civil engineering program was ranked number one in the U.S. So it was, I just set that as my goal and every day and everything I did at community college was to get to that goal. Um, I could have gone somewhere else, definitely, but I just wanted to go to the best. Um, so for me, achieving my college education is more of a challenge slash it's for myself to show, it's great to look back at how much you have overcome, especially through community college, um, especially high school. I was an awful student. Um, but be, to be blunt. So just to be able to look back and see how far I have gone and how far I still have to go um, because, you know, you always want to keep on moving forward, but it's really rewarding. Um, it's much like engineering, you know, you do, you spend 30 minutes on a problem and then you're like, Oh, I got it. You know, it's very, very rewarding feeling and it makes me, makes you feel great and it helps me move forward. So that is why I got a college degree. Awesome, thank you. There are quite a few questions about admissions. Um, so I wanna remind you all that these are amazing students, but they are not admissions counselors. And if I were you, I wouldn't be trusting fellow students to answer those questions, <laughs> just some advice. So um, if you didn't attend last week's webinar, the recording will be posted soon. Uh, I really encourage you to watch that to check in with your community college counselor, or maybe to contact me as I am a staff person who reads these applications. Um, they're able to give you their advice, but they haven't read their application scores. So they don't know what they did well and what they did poorly. They'll never know. <laughs> um, we, okay, moving forward to Berkeley. Could someone tell us about a day in the life of a Berkeley engineer? How many hours a day are you in class? How many hours a day are you studying? Are you going for a run? Are you just in the library? What's going on? That's exciting. Uh, Berkeley engineering students are really busy students. That's no joke. <laughs> um, so usually I wake up in the morning around 8.30 and um, I usually have class by 9.30. Um, I go to class, then I have some labs, um, um, and I'm usually done by the lab around 1 p.m. Uh, that's when I take a small lunch, um, go back, go to work uh, most of the time, most of the week. I uh, have two, two hours of working um, with uh, the, the, the transfer ambassador program. And then um, if I do not have a lab in the evening, um, I will go to the gym, get my workout. If I have a lab, I will go to the lab, then I get my workout and I make sure that in every day I have a de-stress um, kind of activity. So for me, I go work out um, four times a week and I uh, just go on a walk around the campus and see the beautiful sunsets from under the Campanile. This is really good um, to see the the whole Bay Area uh, and the Golden Gate Bridge from the campus here. Um, and, uh, and then I go study with my friends till around 10 p.m., uh, 11 p.m. That time I go home and sleep and get ready for another day. That was very beautiful. Anyone else? Paolo, we've- uh, Yeah, I can- <laughs> I can go the opposite side. Uh, 
So I wake up at 5 a.m. Um, I'm the opposite of oven up. <laughs> so I wake up at 5 a.m. And at 5 a.m. is usually where if I have time and I don't have to like study or like do any homework, I kind of have like a little meditation for myself. I kind of, since I live with other people, um, 5 a.m. is really the time I have fully to myself. So I take, it's my precious time and I take it seriously. Uh, whether it be watching soccer highlights, football highlights, meditating, I just do my thing. Um, and then I'll make breakfast. I'll go to class. I'll go to class. And then after class, I'll have about an hour and a half before I have to work with the amazing Nicole Abanov and shout out Steve. Um, and in between that time is really, I don't really do much studying or library. I really just eat my lunch. Oh yeah. That's also an important thing is really like, I do a lot of meal prepping. Um, if you ever see me, I'm always carrying a lunchbox around campus. Well, not anymore. I now leave in the refrigerator, but that's where I save ton of ton of time is I don't have to go and worry about getting food. I have everything in my lunchbox. So I'll literally just sit in the glade underneath the tree, lay back and really as of right now, it's kind of getting cold now, but I used to just enjoy it like the sun um, and just really just soak in the beautiful nature that campus has. And then I'll go to work. Um, I'll finish up my classes, hit the library for two hours and then around like six ish, I'll go and hit the gym. Um, I saw Abin up there yesterday. It was great. Um, and I'll work out for about an hour and a half and then I'll go home. I already, I already ate my dinner at that point. Um, uh, and I'll go to bed at like eight 30. Um, so that is my day. Awesome. Thank you. In the interest of time, I'm going to ask, uh, if anyone can speak to research at Berkeley, you've been involved in research, you have, you know, knowledge about research. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm doing research right now in the embedded systems lab in Berkeley. Um, the research in Berkeley is pretty cool. Um, they are all, all students, PhD students and professors are working on a really cool stuff and new cutting edge technology. Um, the hardest part is like outside to get into research, but that's not hard. That's not hard. Um, like if you know that takes some trips to do that, um, you will get a research position. And once you are in the lab and talking to a professor and PhD students, they are really humble people. Um, that's, that will, will push you to create and innovate things. Uh, they will teach you everything. Even if you don't know anything, they will teach you. Um, as long as you have the passion and, um, and the willing to learn new things, um, they will teach you and they will keep pushing you forward um, they will have a great advice to grad schools if you want a PhD or not. They, they are kind of big mentors for you too. So um, research at Berkeley is really awesome. Thank you. Okay, what about friends? Some people are worried about making new friends. How has that experience been? you have no trouble at all <laughs> yeah there's don't don't let that be a fear at all and i agree um and it's not even just yeah tons of people and it's not even just like your friends aren't only going to be transfer students you know people like don't really care if you're a transfer student um here um your your friends will be regular students that got admitted as a first year um you'll have no problem, especially if you do clubs, you know, you find people that have the same passion that you have in certain things. For me, it's construction. I have a whole group of people who love to talk about construction, anything you want. Um, like when I was talking, there's also social clubs. Like um, I, if I didn't hurt my knee, I was gonna join the salsa dance team here at Berkeley. Although I'd never have done salsa before, but I thought it was a great place to make friends. Um, but there's a bunch of social clubs where you can really make friends. I'm part of chaos. Um, it's the schools like hiking, outdoor adventure. There's literally emails sent out every, I swear I got three emails a day saying, hey, I'm planning a hike this weekend. Hey, I'm planning Yosemite this weekend. Hey, I'm like this. Everyone's wanting to do something. So you have no problem finding friends. And if not, I can be your friend. I spend a few hours a week with Paolo and it is nonstop him running into people he knows and getting phone calls from fellow students. And I mean, you've only been on campus in person two months. 
So it definitely seems um, doable. Sydney, as a new student, people are interested in hearing a little bit about like a typical day in your life. Would you mind sharing? Sure. Um, I'm one of those people who wakes up at like 8.30. I'm on campus by like 10. And then because I have about, I think I have two classes per day, every day. And so I have a group of people who we either like study in the morning or we study in the afternoon, depending on the day. And then like I have, I'm on one of the dance teams on campus. So I have that in the evenings on Monday and Tuesday and then on Fridays. So I have that as a little bit of a break from engineering. And so that's like eight to 10 on Mondays and Tuesdays. So I don't get home until a little bit later. And then I try to be in bed by like 12. But that's about it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, my final question. I feel like we've been very productive. We've gotten through at least 60 questions. Could any of you speak to what type of student you think thrives at UC Berkeley? And we're specifically talking about the College of Engineering. A curious one. You have to stay curious. Um, yeah, you've got to do it because you truly love it and constantly be just amazed at the material you're learning. So stay curious. Resistance. Resistance is a, a really important aspect. Um, you need to keep trying. Uh, it's not going to go well from the first try. You try, you fail, you try, you fail, and you succeed. Uh, but you have to believe in yourself and be persistent. Um, and to be someone who's willing to take opportunity, um, you really don't know what, what one opportunity will take you to another opportunity. So always just challenge yourself and be willing to take that next step, even if you don't think you're ready for that next step, because that's how you really grow. I don't think I have anything else to add. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, Berkeley Engineering Transfer students, in my experience, exhibit all of those things. Uh, and like I said, they're wildly successful and um, driven and resilient. So um, it's been so great to see some of y'all grow during your time at Berkeley. Um, and Sydney, I look forward to following you through your time. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with folks today. We appreciate it. Hopefully um, it helps you reflect on how far you've come in the two years, year since you were in community college. Uh, I want to remind everyone that we have a couple more webinars coming up this month. Next Thursday, we will have a talk by Professor Matthew Sherburn, who is a material science professor and he is a former transfer student from American River College who got his PhD and became a faculty member. He also was a re-entry student with a bit of a career under his belt before he uh, transferred. The following week, Tiffany Reardon and I will be giving a presentation on how to find research now so that you don't have to wait until you transfer. So lots of different opportunities to get involved in research, which not only is fascinating, but also will really help your transfer application. And I'll be speaking about the Transfer to Excellence Summer Research Program, which uh, I see some of our former interns on the call, which is very exciting. So that's in two weeks. I suggest you register now so that you get that link and you remember it's happening. We'll also be having some major specific webinars uh, engineering science, which you might not know what that means. Come to the webinar at the end of the month and find out. And material science and engineering, which um, last year that webinar was so popular, it changed a handful of my students' mind about what they wanted to major in. They are a very supportive department of transfer students. We also may be adding webinars on the civil and environmental engineering major and the electrical engineering and computer science major. So check back the website and see if those come through. Um, with that, I have put my information in the chat 
And again, thank you to our panelists. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for coming. I hope you have a great rest of your evening.